Whispers of the Moth. The quaint and seemingly undisturbed town of Abigail's Cove, situated as a solitary sentry on the precipice of the uncaring sea, has always thrived in the quietude of normalcy. The ticking of the town clock, the rhythmic lullaby of waves, the chatter of familiar faces, these constituted the gentle, predictable cadence of life. Yet from this mundane tranquility, a plague descended upon us, a plague of an esoteric nature, on the fragile, silent wings of uncanny moths. The first one to perceive this eldritch phenomenon was Louise, a custodian of knowledge, an observer of the world through the written word. She was the lonely librarian whose soul found solace in the silent conversation between ink and paper. When the first moth came into her view, carrying a shred of paper in its grotesquely dexterous grasp, it flitted in the pallid halo of the lamppost, marking the genesis of our town's descent into the unutterable. With each passing night the moth's numbers multiplied, a macabre echo of the biblical locust plague. They were unlike any creatures seen before, eerily large, conducting themselves with an intelligence and purpose that was monstrous in its implications. Their silent parade around the town, their grim and spectral vigil around certain houses in the obsidian curtain of night, cast an abhorrent shadow upon the hearts of the townsfolk. While the residents of Abigail's Cove dismissed these signs as a product of Louise's overactive imagination, it did not take long for the moths to weave their dark tapestry around the lives of all. The terror was subliminal creeping in like a chilling sea mist as the townsfolk found their dwellings under the silent scrutiny of these winged harbingers of dread. There was an infernal quality to these omens that Louise could not ignore. It was as if an icy hand traced the fear-laden arteries of her heart every time she spotted a moth bearing an artifact of personal significance. There was a mystery, a dreadful enigma that beckoned her towards its loathsome heart. Within the labyrinthine aisles of the library, she decided to delve into the heart of this enigma, to peel back the layers of our town's forgotten past. A past, she was certain, held the key to understanding the silent reign of the moths. As the cold tendrils of evening wrapped around the town, and she secured the library, the spectral dance of the moths under the mournful lamplight served as a ghastly tableau of the impending doom. She was yet to realize, however, that she was on the precipice of a reality that would shatter the facade of her world, thrusting her and all of Abigail's Cove into an abyss of unearthly terror. Deepening dread gnawed at Louise's sanity as she was submerged into an insidious realm of nocturnal terror, borne on the wings of these most peculiar moths. The night was no longer a tranquil blanket of rest and peace, but an abyss from which countless eyes stared back at her, eyes on silent wings that stole privacy and left in its place an omnipresent sense of intrusion. Then, as if the moths were not a chilling enough harbinger of doom, people began to vanish like smoke in the wind. Old Hawthorne, a recluse, once a painter of some esteem, disappeared, leaving behind an empty easel and a canvas that would bear no more colors of life. Then sweet Ellie Mason, the young daughter of the local baker, vanished into the ether. Each disappearance seemed tethered to the loathsome attention of the moths. Their silent vigil around the houses of the disappeared marked them as unspoken co-conspirators, their secret whispers swallowed by the unforgiving night. The atmosphere in Abigail's Cove curdled from tranquility into a paralyzing dread. An ill wind blew through its streets, carrying whispers of fear and suspicion. The shadow of the moths lay over everything, tinging each innocent laughter, each friendly greeting, with an undertone of haunting apprehension. Motivated by the desperate need to make sense of this madness, Louise found herself locked in the sepulchral silence of the library's archives. In the embrace of dust and disintegrating parchment, she sought to connect the horrifying present with the eerie echoes of the town's forgotten past. It was during these somber investigations that she stumbled upon a tome of unnerving revelations. The town, it appeared, was not a stranger to the shadows of the occult. Centuries prior, it had housed a cult whose devotion was pledged to an abhorrent deity named Abhoth, the source of uncleanliness. The members believed Abhoth to be a font of all miscreation, all abominations born from the chaotic folds of reality itself. 
The cult, the tome revealed, were servants of Abhoth, using the moths as their spies, gathering secrets and selecting their victims for the unutterable horrors of sacrifice. The cold grip of realization choked Louise as she read the grotesque tales of their rituals. The echoes of the past were reverberating into the present, ringing with a discordant melody that reeked of an unimaginable doom. Could it be possible that the malignant specter of the cult had re-emerged, casting its monstrous shadow on Abigail's cove once more? The infernal dance of the moths around a neighbor's house as Louise left the library confirmed her fears. The sight filled her with a primal terror that chilled her bones. Yet within this terror flickered a spark of resolution. She would trace the path of the moths, follow them into the very heart of darkness, and expose the unholy truth. Louise, a mere librarian, had unwittingly become the town's sole beacon of hope against the rapidly encroaching tide of ancient horrors as the grim symphony of the past played out once more in the haunting whispers of the moths. Now a prisoner of dread, Louise dared to traverse the winding spectral paths laid by the nocturnal harbingers, each flutter of their ghostly wings resonating with an eldritch melody of terror. The malignant moonlight bathed the town in a pallid glow, casting shadows that danced in unholy rhythm to the silent whispers of the night. Guided by an unyielding determination, Louise began her grim vigil, trailing the congregation of moths to their mysterious destination. Their clandestine journey led her to the outskirts of town, to the derelict remnants of an old chapel, nearly swallowed by nature, its crumbling stone a testament to the unmerciful march of time. The eerie chapel stood desolate under the scrutiny of the moonlight, its gothic architecture rendered ghastly in the muted glow. But what truly elicited a visceral dread was the incessant flutter of moths that adorned its cracked facade, their bodies forming grotesque glyphs and patterns, as if conveying an alien language to the moon and stars above. From within the gutted chapel, an unholy chorus reached her ears, chants of an ancient tongue reverberating in the midnight air, echoing the madness of ages past. As the realization set in, a chilling fear gripped her heart. The cult had returned, their repugnant devotion to Aboth revived, the cosmic echoes of their arcane rituals once again tainting the air of Abigail's cove. With her pulse echoing in her ears, she dared to peer into the chapel's blackened maw. Cloaked figures swayed in hypnotic rhythm, their forms cast in inky silhouettes by the flicker of cruel candles. In their midst, a grotesque altar held a place of unhallowed honor, atop which a monstrous sculpture of Abhoth rested, its form defying the laws of nature and sanity, its mere sight a blasphemy to the human mind. The sight of the chapel's blasphemous interior wrenched Louise's heart into a vice of horror. The dread seeped into her very soul as she watched the cult deliver their sacrificial offerings to the horrid deity. The mementos brought by the moths were laid before the altar, each object a tragic testament to the doom that awaited the owners. Overwhelmed by terror and the horrifying revelation, she retreated, fleeing from the unspeakable scene unfolding in the chapel. As she ran, the frantic beat of her heart kept time with the ghastly chants that pursued her, the fluttering of moth wings, a spectral reminder of the impending doom. Returning to the sanctuary of her home, Louise knew that time was running out. The cult was active, their monstrous deity was being fed, and more innocent townsfolk were marked for sacrifice. She felt the weight of this ghastly knowledge bear down on her, but she also felt the ember of courage continue to burn. She was the only one who understood the terror that lurked within the town's shadows, and she was the only one who could attempt to halt the incoming tide of horror. In the agonizing days that followed her grim discovery, Louise descended into an abyss of solitary obsession, her mind entwined with the cult's malevolent presence like ivy around a tombstone. Each waking moment was dedicated to decoding the sinister selection methods employed by the cult to discern the unseen criteria that determined the doomed. The isolation was maddening, yet necessary, for she dared not involve any other soul in this nightmarish vortex, lest they too be claimed by the unspeakable terror. Louise's obsession brought her face to face with the harsh truth of her mission. She was immersed in a cosmic battle against forces that operated beyond the boundaries of human comprehension, 
forces that saw humanity as nothing more than insignificant specks in the grand tapestry of cosmic horror. The gravity of her endeavor was hammered into her with the irrefutable finality of a coffin nail on one moon-silvered night when she discovered her own dwelling besieged by the hauntingly silent congregation of moths. Their spectral glow seemed to whisper of her imminent doom, their grotesque wings casting elongated shadows that crept over her home like a shroud. Fear, stark and relentless, knotted itself around Louise's heart. She was marked for sacrifice, a lamb awaiting slaughter at the eldritch altar of Abhoth. Yet within her, a flame of resolution flickered resiliently against the gusts of terror. She had been selected by the cult, yes, but she would not succumb without a fight. For the battle against the monstrous entities, Louise conceived a perilous plan. She would not flee, would not cower. Instead, she would meet the cult head-on, disrupt their loathsome ceremony, and hopefully sever the unholy thread that connected them to Abhoth. She was gripped by a strange courage, born not of bravado but of desperation, a last resort measure in the face of the cosmic horror that stood poised to claim her. Armed with her plan, Louise prepared herself for the ensuing battle. Little did she know that her journey into the cryptic heart of the town's secret was about to take a turn more dire and ghastly than she could have ever envisioned. Little did she know that the shadows marked not just her fate, but held within them revelations so horrifying that they threatened to shatter the boundaries of her sanity. The night awaited, the moths whispered, and Louise stood at the threshold of the abyss, staring into its inscrutable depths. The night was inky black, a canvas dappled with the ethereal glow of distant stars, as Louise ventured once more into the monstrous heart of the nightmare. Driven by an uncanny resolve, she slithered towards the unholy chapel, her heart thumping a frenzied rhythm against her ribs, her courage teetering on the precipice of abject terror. Within the chapel, the grotesque pageant was in full swing. The shadowy figures swayed like marionettes under a nefarious power, their chants raising an uncanny dirge that seemed to curdle the night air. Straining against the crippling grip of fear, Louise slipped into the unholy sanctum, a lone moth drawn towards the chilling flame of cosmic horror. Armed with the resolve of disrupting the ceremony, she navigated the shadowy recesses of the chapel. Each step was a defiance against the unseen forces that lurked in the darkness, every breath a prayer against the impending doom. As she attempted to sow a diversion, her attention was arrested by an appalling revelation. The moths were not merely spies, they were messengers, and the message they carried was not from the cult, but from the outer god, Aboth. The eldritch deity, it seemed, communicated through these nocturnal heralds. Each flutter of their wings, each eerie glow from their bodies was a part of an unspeakable dialogue, an unbearable language that whispered of the universe's darkest secrets. It was a truth so disturbing, so contrary to her understanding of the natural world, that it threatened to unhinge her sanity. The abominable deity's whispers filled her ears, the incomprehensible syntax, the terrible revelations it carried shaking her very soul. As Louise staggered under the weight of her ghastly discovery, the unthinkable happened. The menacing hymns ceased abruptly, the chapel plunging into an ominous silence. Then a voice cut through the silence as chilling as the touch of a corpse. Intruder, it proclaimed, shattering the oppressive stillness. All eyes turned towards her, the cloak of shadows no longer a refuge. In the hollow gaze of the cultists, under the spectral glare of the monstrous Aboth, Louise stood exposed. The grim echo of her discovery hung heavy in the air as the monstrous deity's whispers wound around her like serpentine coils. A paralyzing terror wrapped itself around her heart as she stood on the precipice of her doom staring into the maw of her unthinkable fate. Caught in the baleful spotlight of the cultist's gaze, Louise stood on the precipice of oblivion. Yet within her trembling form, there resided a spirit that refused to be extinguished. She had embarked on this perilous journey not merely as a victim trying to evade her fate, but as a guardian who dared to confront the cosmic horror that loomed over her beloved town. The confrontation was no mere standoff of flesh and bone, but a harrowing battle of the mind. Abhoth, through the spectral conduits of the moths, whispered unutterable truths, an alien symphony that sought to shatter her sanity and reduce her resolve to cosmic dust. 
Each whisper was a wave crashing against the fortress of her mind, each secret a hammer blow to the pillars of her understanding of reality. Yet Louise endured. Clinging to the anchor of her humanity, she resisted the maddening cacophony of Abhoth's whispers, her every breath a defiance against the unfathomable deity. It was in this precarious balance between sanity and madness, between human fragility and cosmic horror, that Louise found the strength to disrupt the ritual. Summoning the last vestiges of her courage, she shattered the unhallowed serenity of the ritual, her voice tearing through the chapel like a knife. The reaction was instantaneous. The ceremonial chants broke, the rhythm disrupted. Confusion reigned amongst the cultists, their blasphemous connection to Abhoth disturbed. The moths, those winged heralds of doom, fluttered chaotically, their alien messages distorted. The harmony between the deity and its worshippers shattered, the dissonance was deafening. Abhoth, disrupted and momentarily weakened, retreated into the veiled depths of the cosmos, leaving behind a trail of discord and palpable relief. But the victory was not without its price. Louise was left scarred, her mind forever imprinted with the nightmarish ordeal. She had glimpsed the edges of reality and peered into the abyss of cosmic horror. The knowledge of what lurked in the smallest corners of reality was now a part of her, a haunting echo that would resonate in her soul forever. Louise, once a mere librarian, was now a sentinel in a battle against the cosmic horrors that dared encroach upon her world. The peace of her small town was disturbed, a whisper away from plunging into chaos again, and as she stood the solitary beacon against the darkness, she was left with the horrifying certainty of the vast, unknowable terror that the universe held, a terror that could descend upon them with the whisper of a moth's wings. We hope you enjoyed this horror story. Consider liking and subscribing to support our creators. Thank you.